Hello, hello, and welcome to Games Revisited. I am your host, Anon Jr., and we are getting ready to resume our little run through the games of my youth. Um, the games of my youth. Oh, wait, no, that was a different game. Or, that was a movie. <laughs> if I can remember to hit the right buttons, we'll go ahead and get that kind of stuff going. All right. Now... I am going, we went through the Super Mario Brothers trilogy in the first episode at the top of the stream, and if you're watching this live later on YouTube, that was yesterday's episode. Today, we're going to get into a couple more of ye old time killers. These are the kinds of things that, yeah, you just kind of picked up and you ran through, and it, it was... You know, you just did it for the fun of it. Let me see if uh, any of these... Um, yeah, not all of these got picked up in the scan for Retro Arch, but, uh, one of them, uh, I'll hang off on you annoyed because that, that kind of hits a little fuzzy line depending on how you want to do it. So let me get into load content. Let's see, Let's see users, see users run, run users run. Oh wait, no programmer humor. Sorry. All right, we're going to head back into Dropbox with my NES ROMs, and we're going to load up the mother of all time killers, Tetris. <laughs> this is it. This is when it started, folks. 1987. Ooh. Ooh. Sorry, that gives me a chiller. chills thinking about that. 87, 89. This is, uh, I'm sure you've played various clones, reboots, uh, and all that fun stuff. You could pick your game type, you could pick your music type. So here we go, and that's it. Tetris being four-sided item, you had various four-sided items falling. You could use the arrows to accelerate it. You could rotate them clockwise and counterclockwise, depending on whether you're hitting A or B. And the goal was to make vertical, no, horizontal lines. <laughs> vertical was bad, horizontal was good. <laughs> and this is it, this is the game. Now it doesn't look so difficult right this minute because everything's flowing at a nice sedate rate. Although this is where we get introduced to the frustration of the game, giving you exactly what you didn't need, exactly when you didn't want it. Um, game systems since time immemorial would continue to do that for the decades to come. <clears throat> yep, yeah. all right, I'm already in trouble. I guess I'm struggling to talk and rotate at the same time. <laughs> oh man, many hours were spent playing this. Now keep in mind, around this time, Nintendo released their handheld version of their handheld gaming system called the Game Boy, which was really awesome for a black and white handheld console because it was among the early handheld consoles ostensibly I had a Game Boy I stay ostensibly because my mother whom I love dearly hi mom um, spent more time playing Tetris on my Game Boy than I ever spent playing anything on my Game Boy <laughs> she even made sure to buy me the power brick, so you, I wouldn't go through batteries as quickly. <laughs> oh, the things you remember. Yay! Okay. Now, I'm not going to keep going through that. I, I could sit there all day going through the different, uh, <laughs> the different bits and bobs, and but basically the idea was that the, as the game went on. The pieces would start falling faster and faster and faster faster 
Yes. And so you had to start thinking a little bit faster and looking a little bit further ahead. And remember, all you've got is that next. You don't know beyond that next. So you've got the field in front of you, the thing that's falling, and you only know what's next. Some of the... Ne <laughs> yeah. No, stop, slow down. Yeah, exactly. Many a word were uttered. <laughs> and all that good fun. Um, yeah. So... Some of the people who got really hardcore about their Tetris playing and would come up with these obscenely high scores actually spent time studying the algorithm that determined what piece was next because it wasn't entirely random. It was close to random with some waiting to make sure that you didn't get too many of the same thing twice and that kind of thing. And, and so if you knew the algorithm, you had a pretty good idea of what was coming up next. Some people just played it enough to uh, to intuit what would come next. And, and so, yeah, it, it's one of those really... Oh, bother. I keep hitting the wrong button. Um, close the content. All right. So, what's next on our time wasters? Oh, yes, it is a return to Mario. What's that? Oh, yes. By by this time, uh, Mario had become... Go in the wrong direction. There we go. By this time, Mario had uh, become the symbol of all things Nintendo, the mascot of everything and anything, to include the second mother of all time wasters and competitor to Tetris. Come on. Dr. Mario. Now, this is 1990. We're getting a little bit better with the graphics again, because keep in mind, the Nintendo Entertainment System ran from 1985, 1986, somewhere in that ballpark, on through 1995. 1995 was when it was no longer supported. So just like all game systems, it went through the early games were a little rough because they were kind of trying to drag what they were doing with the old game systems into the new one. And as time picked up, they finally figured out, oh yeah, here's the new things we can do. All right, we'll start. Uh... Oh. And Kind of like Tetris, you had to line up things, only this time you're trying to line up colors. So you're trying to match the color of the pill with the color of the thing, stack four of a color and everything disappears and life is good. And your, your goal was to clear the bacteria. <laughs> Without it, without the pills stacking up to the top of the bottle, which sounds like like an activity that might have happened in the development phase of this game, but um, <laughs> you won't get into that any further. Stage clear. Try next. And yeah, so this was another one of those time wasters, one of those things that you could spend forever on. Yeah. You know, there was a there was a two player mode available as well, so you know you could sit there with your friends and trade out and see who could get the high scores, who could go, f you know, who could manage the best progress and that kind of thing. Um, all sorts of fun stuff. All right, um, I don't like any of these options. Yeah, I don't like any of these options. I want another one. There we go. All right. I won't spend too much time on this, because, again, th this was one of those time wasters. This was one of those games that you could just load up when you got nothing but time and burn through a whole bunch of stuff and, and just spend hours. Hours. All right. So, with that said and done, let me go ahead and let me close content. Ah, I thought it was going to at least lead me back in the uh, the right directory. Okay. So, we've got Tetris and and uh, Dr. Mario. Now, 
I'm going to segue back to... Oh, <laughs> I wrote a couple of games in the same spot. Um, yeah, there, there, there was a lot of those little time waster ones that, that if you got nothing but time on your hands or you just got a few minutes and you don't want to get into something deep and involving, that was an option. Uh, so what I'm going to do is... Let's see, that's why I'm, hmm, did I have any, <laughs> uh, you could probably find it as an Android game. Honestly, a, a lot of these, a lot of these games, Super Mario Brothers, Tetris, Dr. Mario, they've been ported to a bajillion different consoles. Matter of fact, the Nintendo Switch includes Super Mario Brothers 3 as uh, bonus content if you sign up for the subscription service or at least that used to be the case I'm not 100% sure if that still is um, so I think what I will do is I will hit up one more bit of classic and then I will do my little intermission and slide into some of the other side scrollers that you may be familiar with. So what I'm going to pull up now is Kid Icarus, uh, not because I thoroughly enjoyed the game, but because this was another one of those games that lasted forever. And it's where we're finally getting into a little bit more of the, not just left and right, but um, starting to incorporate some up and down motion in the game too. Uh, I find it interesting that it seems like the older games used to actually do a little bit more to incorporate um, lore and things. Okay, I don't remember what that was on about. Of course, what made this game interesting is that the world and you wrapped around the edge of the screen. Because I, I don't know if you noticed that when uh, when I hit the end. Oop. This is probably going to be the end of me. <laughs> I never did. I never was that good at this one. I wonder if those are supposed to be beholders. Ah! I'm finished! <laughs> yeah, I'm finished. That one was a shorter run. Again, I'm trying to get a better idea on pacing. So that was a little bit shorter run. I wanted to hit up most of the time wasters and that sort of thing. And um, so with that, I'm going to close out the second run. If you're watching on YouTube, thanks for catching this quick little bit, this uh, interlude, as I'm calling the between the seasons bits. Um, so thank you for joining along on this interlude. Make sure you hit subscribe and all that good fun stuff. Get notified when the new games go up. If you want to watch this live, there's a link down below to Twitch and Mixer where I simulcast these streams. If you are watching me live right now as I record this, stick with me because I'm going to hit the title screen and then we're going to come back for round three. That's right. If you're watching live you get to see all six episodes as they're being made. So uh, join along, have fun, and uh, if you're watching live, hang tight. There's more coming.